Hey, Edith. Hey, Christy. What did the pasta say to the tomato? Hmm, I don't know. What? Don't get saucy with me. <laughs> Why did the tomato blush? Why? Because it saw the salad dressing? <laughs> Okay. Hello, friends. You may have guessed it. We're talking about tomatoes, the most popular plant to grow in your veggie garden. The days are getting longer, the earth is warming, and if it's not quite time to plant tomatoes where you are, it sure is getting close. I can't wait for the first BLT of the summer, but we are too behind in planting and need to catch up a little. Yeah. So, we're going to give you a special encore of our tomato episode from last summer. We share with you about the different kinds of tomatoes. How to plant, water, mulch, prune, and fertilize. This is also the infamous episode where I reveal what happened to the tomatoes I forgot about in my attic for 10 months. And we will be back at the end to share some of our tomato plans for this summer and new tips and tricks because we learn new things every year. So enjoy our take on Plump Things with the Navel and we'll see you on the other side. Cue music! Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. All right, Edith, let's yes. talk tomatoes. My favorite thing about the summer, tomatoes. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love this phrase. It says, gardening is cheaper than therapy and you get tomatoes. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. Yeah, I think that um, it is truly the, re it is the reward of summer is tomatoes. If there's only one thing you can plant, plant a tomato in a container, in a garden, in somebody else's mm -hmm. garden where, where, when they're not looking, plant a tomato. There is not a fruit or a vegetable that tastes better mm -hmm. than when you grow it yourself. Christy, that is so true. You know, I've been, I have to admit this, I've been buying tomatoes at the grocery store because mine have not ripened and I simply cannot wait. And they're, they're practically tasteless. Like you gave me some last week mm -hmm. that put me straight to Nirvana. Oh, then I go to the you're, that's so great. Oh my gosh. So I'm not going to buy any more. I'm going to grit my teeth and wait. Well, I, I have some I can give you. That was a huge beg, an unspoken beg. Thank you. <laughs> and you, you know, it really does mean, though, that I care a lot about you because I will give away a lot of vegetables, but I rarely give away oh, tomatoes. Oh, my God. Wow. I'll just take two if that's all right. <laughs> you betcha. Thank you. Did you know that tomatoes are thought to originate in Peru? Aha. And the name comes from the Aztec Zotomali which means plump thing with a navel. <laughs> All kinds of pictures just went up in my head. Yeah. That I'm Sometimes not gonna... people call me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, who knew the Aztecs had such a sense of humor? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that, you know, it finally moved over to England with, you know, the conquerors and whatnot? bringing uh, stuff back to their queen. Did you know that people used to think it was poison? <gasps> they called it uh, the, a poison apple. Oh. And do you know why? Why? Because the rich people who ate it, uh -huh. they had pewter. They ate off of pewter. And the tomato is so acidic, <gasps> they were giving themselves lead poisoning. Oh, my goodness. That's what you get for being rich in the Middle Ages. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Serves them right. Serves Let them, them eat right. cake. Yep. Let them eat tomatoes. There you go. On pewter. Yes. So does that made me think, my gosh, did um did the queen actually give Snow White a tomato? With oh the my poison gosh. An apple? I thought that about would that. yes, that did you know the French thought that they were aphrodisiacs? Oh. And they called them palms d'amour or love apples. Do you know that the French think everything is an aphrodisiac? <laughs> they don't even need an aphrodisiac. Do they really? That's true. The French that everything baguettes is. are aphrodisiacs, slugs, snails. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point. What a lusty people. <laughs> uh, the heaviest tomato on record is seven pounds, 12 ounces. 
Wow. Grown by Gordon Graham. I want to give this guy a shout out of Edmond, Oklahoma in 1986. Wow. He sliced the tomato to make sandwiches for 21 family members. Oh, that's so nice. Look at that. Yeah. I kind of pity the tomato plant, though. It's like being pregnant with eight kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like, oh, oh, oh my gosh. I can't move. <laughs> I wonder if there were any more tomatoes on the plant, or if the plant just, just put that everything one. in that one massive tomato. Yeah, that could be. You know? Um, 93% of American gardening households grow tomatoes. Oh, that's good. So if you're listening to us and you have a garden, 93% of you uh -huh. have a tomato plant. And I have to wonder about the other 7%. If you're one of those 7%, can you please write to us and explain to us in great detail why you are not growing Christy, tomatoes? Christy, I know people that don't like tomatoes. I can tell you why. It's because of the texture. Oh. Yeah, they, Some they, people are allergic also. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, do you know that you're supposed to leave a tomato at room temperature and never put in the refrigerator? I do know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never put it in the refrigerator. Don't put it in the windowsill either. I just the squirrels will get it. <laughs> <laughs> and once you pick them, they don't need light. The light has absolutely no effect on them ripening. It's the heat that ripens them, right? That's why you can wrap them in newspaper. It's yes. It's what's already inside them. Yeah. They have collected the energy to ripen already. Yeah. Now you planted your tomatoes. Let's talk about how we plant, how we grow them. So you grew yours from seed this year, right? I did. I did. Yeah. That's impressive. For the first time. Yeah. You know, I made a little bit of a mistake, which is I my favorite variety is black crim, and that's pretty much all that I planted. So they're kind of late ripeners. See, that's why you don't have tomatoes right now. And that's right why now. I don't have tomatoes. And the other reason, Christy, I read this today and I never knew this, it's too hot for certain varieties to go red. It's too hot. Mm -hmm. They Did you know that? Yes. I didn't know that. Temperature makes such a big uh, deal in the whole scheme of tomatoes. They always say tomatoes love the heat, but apparently not to ripen. Yeah, not over 85 degrees. And it has been 94. I don't know. Has it ever in the yeah. world been under 90 ever here? Ever? It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. You know, I do a combination. I have, um, I will get seedlings from a, a reputable nursery actors in Arvada. Um, I will always get a, I love a cherry tomato. I will always get a Roma. I will get an early girl. And then my friend Melanie, I'm going to give a shout out to my friend Melanie. She grows dozens of tomatoes from seed every year. She so kindly gives me some, which is why I have nine tomato plants. Mm, nice. You know, I actually do have, um, I always do Romas as well because I make my, I freeze them and make my own spaghetti sauce all mm -hmm. uh, winter long. And Romas are great because they are a determinate tomato. Yes. they. That means they all get ripe at the same time. And the reason for that is the big agriculture, uh, people like Campbell's, they just have to send the machine through once to collect the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So, Which is different than an indeterminate tomato. Yes, which is what we like because it has a growing season. Like, they will keep growing and getting red until the frost. Yeah. So, and they're more spontaneous, too. An indeterminate tomato tomatoes also gets bigger. It does, yes, yes. You have to stake them. That's like really larger. important. You have to stake them or they yeah. will just fall over. Yeah. How big is it going to get? I don't know. It's indeterminate. <laughs> when are the tomatoes going to happen? I don't know. It's indeterminate. Who knows? It's unpredictable. Is it ever going to get below 90 again? I don't know. <laughs> it's indeterminate. We'll it's indeterminate. We'll see. But a, but a determinate tomato is smaller and it's bushier and you'll get all the tomatoes at once. So they're great for canning mm -hmm. and for freezing. Not so good. Um, there's certain uh, varieties that are not so good for eating just raw like we like. Yeah, I noticed that, too. They're, they're, they're just not. They're, and that is because they are actually bred for processing. There's a weird mouthfeel. They get, I don't know, sort of mushy or grainy. Very or... mushy. Very pasty and mushy. Yeah. In fact, my Romas this year are Amish paste. That's the variety, Amish paste. <laughs> you know, it was it was hard this year with the supply chain. It was hard to get which, everything that you wanted. Because, because so many people are gardening right now. Yeah. 
So by the time I got there to get my romas, I didn't grow my romas from seed. Mm -hmm. They were all, all they had left was Amish paste. Now, are the ones that you grew are these are are these heirloom? Or are they I, yes, they're heirlooms. So that yeah. you could have a get an heirloom tomato or a hybrid. Mm -hmm. An heirloom tomato is going to be a seed that has developed over generations. Yep. In fact, in some parts of the world, you give tomato seeds as a wedding gift. Wow, nice. Wow, that have been in the family for generations, yeah. mm -hmm. probably. Wow. Uh, I think there's actually a brand called like Kansas Wedding Tomato. That is so cool. I didn't know yeah. that. And then a hybrid is forced pollination. Yes. The good thing about that, though, is that it'll be more disease resistant, more tolerant to cold, but you might be missing out on some of the great flavor. That and an heirloom will and have. if you collect the seeds, there's no guarantee you're going to get the parent plant. That's true. Because too. it's a hybrid yes. from two different yeah. strains. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, planting the tomato because you can get a lot of great success and the unique ways of planting mm -hmm. um, when you have it and it's ready to go into the ground. Well, first of all, you should harden it off. Always harden everything off. Yeah. Uh, which is you just cannot bring it home from the nursery and stick it in the ground. I've done it before. It will work, but your tomato will be crabby. Or it, or it won't work and because won't work. you'll get a frost, an unexpected yeah. frost, and you're killing the little tiny thing. Yeah, hardening off is just about bringing the tomato out into, uh, for a couple hours a day, just increasing the time every single day so it gets used to it because it's been so yes. happy in the greenhouse or underneath your uh, lights. Yeah. So it's either shocked by the cold at night or mm -hmm. it's shocked by the direct sun, mm -hmm. which neither of which it's used to. When I first started planting tomatoes, I never knew how deep you were supposed to plant them. Oh, de oh, oh. now see, there's some controversy about that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, can I tell you how I plant them yeah. now? So I, I dig like a little tiny trench. First of all, I rip off all the lower leaves. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And, uh, get, then you, I plant it horizontally every, and every, as close to the surface as mm -hmm. I, not deep at all. And everywhere that there was a leaf forms a new root. Right. And then you tip up the top. So, of course, it's looking up, yeah. right? And I've that, done that. I do, do you that. do that yeah. too? Yeah. Or depending on the plant, I'll just plant it deeper too. Yeah. Depending on how bendable. How bendable it is. Tomatoes yeah. are pretty darn bendable when yeah. they're little. <laughs> What's cool about it though is that you don't need a lot of space to plant a tomato. You don't need acreage. You don't need a yard. You could plant a tomato in a container in a sunny spot on your porch, on your deck. Um, yeah. Any place where you get a good eight hours of sun will be just fine. If uh, Yeah, you have to get that eight hours of sun. So, And also, if you plant it next to a wall or a fence, the heat's reflected back on it. That's smart. So um, that's also helpful, you know, in case you live in a, a colder yeah. zone. And if you want to plant a container, just look in your nursery for something that says dwarf, or even they'll even say container plant. I think cherry tomatoes make a great container Oh my God, they are, and, and they're wonderful. They're like candy with no calories. Oh, they're so, them. so great. I have to have a cherry tomato every year. Yeah, me uh, too, me too. And you should also make sure when you plant that you give them room. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, it's amazing how big they get. They get huge. You can never believe it. And not only that, if they touch, if the two tomato plants grow together and one gets sick, it'll pass, you know, we don't put masks on them. Yeah. So, so, uh, right. Yeah. Or it sort of like reminds me of like growing up with my siblings, like, stop touching me. I'm not touching you. <laughs> yes. Quit touching me. Touching. Mom, she's touching me. <laughs> They're looking at me. Make them stop looking at me. <laughs> they shouldn't. They shouldn't touch. I need space in between it. And then you have to um, uh, stake them. Yes. Support them somehow. They need support, Edith. Support your tomatoes. Yeah, they, they need do. emotional and physical support. Yes, they do. They're counting on you, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can buy those cone ones, those three-pronged cages. I like the four, the square ones. They are good. I don't have any of those, but I've seen them, and they look really good. I get mine at Gardner Supply Catalog, and I just love them because they fold up, so they store away real easy. I also, um, before I put the dirt back on them, mm -hmm. I'll put a little bit of um, old compost. I mean, not like fresh yes, stuff. Yes, a couple and, inches. Um, Epsom salts as well. I dig that into the earth around them. Yeah, I've heard also people do eggshells, and or eggshells. Yeah. And do you know what uh, some people do to keep you know cutworms 
Mm-hmm. They can come and they can eat the little tiny yeah. plant. Under the ground. Under the ground. Yeah. I've seen, I saw a bunch of them when I was uh, digging around in my garden. But if, I read this one thing where if you put a stick, a little stick next to the tomato plant, uh-huh. the worm comes along underground. Da da da. Here he comes. Here he comes. And he thinks it's a tomato <laughs> stalk, so he starts chewing on it. Oh, psych. And he goes like, this is too hard. And then he leaves. So that's the theory. I don't know if that works. Other people put, you know, a toilet roll, the uh, yeah, cardboard? Yeah, I've heard that. Like a collar. Yeah. And then, I mean, after a few rains, that will go away. But what you want to do is protect a little tiny seedling. Yeah, they don't care about the older plants. I no. just love those little baby yep, tomatoes. They do. And um, it's important to say, though, that tomatoes are hungry. They like to be fed a lot. Yeah. So make mm-hmm. sure you put some fertilizer in. What kind of fertilizer do you use? I'm, You know, I, I was nodding my head, but I was kind of lying. Because um, other than uh, Epsom salts, I, I don't. Really? Yeah. I, I, I trust my soil. Remember, I've been oh, amending that yeah, soil for 22 been. years. Yeah. So I really trust the soil. And before... Uh, You know, I make those trenches and put compost in, in the fall Uh and in the spring to to let the soil relax and get nourished. Well, I do feed. I feed in the the spring Uh and then I do another feeding. I just did a feeding a couple weeks ago of Dr. Earth. Okay. That sounds... An organic... Professional. Yeah. (laughs) Organic. (laughs) But they also have those slow release, you know, sticks you can Uh put on, like a Job Uh stick you should... And then, uh, as we have talked before... You have to mulch it. You have to mulch it. And also, I just remember what else I do. Sometimes I make compost tea or horse yeah. manure tea. Yeah. I'm making that right now. I've seen people do that. Mm-hmm. And then you, so what you do is you just put yeah. some horse manure or compost in a bucket, put some water, let it sit for a while. Mmm, what a smell. Really not that bad. And then. <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind it either. Yeah. And then after a couple of weeks, then you can Pour it around your tomatoes Mm -hmm. or around whatever you want. hungry. Yeah. We're going to take a break. Be right back. Upside Down Tulips is brought to you by the Society for Humming Hums and Hummers. COVID-19 has changed how we gather for special occasions. We need to wear masks and socially distance in very small groups. And sadly, no singing, as singing generates too many droplets into the air. That is why... The Society for Humming Hums and Hummers asks you to consider humming. Humming behind a mask is safe, easy, and fun. You can hum at birthday parties. (laughs) At weddings. At bar mitzvahs. <laughs> and you can also hire a professional humming soloist at baseball games until they cancel the season. <laughs> or for your very own private Broadway cabaret. <laughs> And if this thing goes on for much longer, for Christmas caroling. (laughs) Humming. It's nothing to sing about. Mm -hmm. Hello, we're back. Uh, We were talking about... Things like worms. There are some pests also that can get in the way that love tomatoes. Yeah. That awful green hornworm thing. Yeah, they are huge. They're huge. And they're, they're about mm. maybe four inches. They're a lime green with little, it looks like it has a bunch of eyeballs on it. Yes. And it has a horn on it. It actually yeah. has a horn sticking they're up. They're so scary. They are kind of scary. You have to Luckily, squish they're them. they're small. Yeah. Ew, don't yeah, say yeah. squish. Oh, <laughs> no. And then stink bugs. Stink love tomatoes. Bugs, stink bugs, yeah. And the Colorado potato bug. All of which, you know, don't I don't use pesticides. I don't, Christy I don't doesn't either. either. Yeah. Uh, or insectis. So just uh, squish them. Just squish them. There you go. I'll squish them too. Or you can put some insecticidal soap. 
mm-hmm. or some neem oil, which is from a natural tree in India. So there are there's other things that will freak you out, but they're not that bad, like blossom end rot. Yeah. You know, no tomato crop is perfect. And that's the good part about being an organic uh, gardener. You realize that perfection is not really what you're going for. It's a tropical plant. It, not only, you, yeah, exactly. You, 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 if you're at the store, everything looks exactly uniform, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, that's not the way it, nature intended it. And there's a certain amount of imperfection and loss that is built in. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. I think the plant expects it and mm-hmm. has extras just in case. Yeah. And some years can be tougher on tomatoes than other years that you have no control over. This is a tough year on tomatoes, I think. The, weather, ca- the weather. The weather can yeah. do. We had that huge, heavy, heavy rain, mm-hmm. and it didn't matter what we did to protect it. What it did is it splashed up the fungus that was in the ground. Yep. And the heat is not helping. Yeah. In fact, Christy, I had a, uh, a message from a friend of mine, Carol in Pennsylvania, and she asked, she said to me, um, my tomatoes are blotchy. Could they be shy? <laughs> Isn't that great? You're right. That is adorable. It's adorable. So, yeah. And my tomatoes, here's what I noticed. They have that big white sections on them. It just turns what, but, but that's okay. That doesn't hurt anything. It's like white pithy tissue. Oh, and it just, it's not powdery mildew. It too, it's one of two things. It could be caused by stink bug, bug feeding, oh, which you just bugs, mentioned. Yeah. Or it could be caused by the heat. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Have you ever tried shading? Um, not often, but you it's know, a I good know people idea. And, and if folks who do this in other places, let us know how you shade. Because I know people like in Oklahoma and Texas, they will put shade over their plants. And I did, I did it once this summer already when it was in the upper 90s. Well, you did it with your chair, with your lawn chair. With my lawn chair, but then I did it with just um, row covers to cover it over. So, But you know, so things don't chase perfection with no, chemicals. Uh-uh. No. Um, a lot of problems can be corrected if you catch them early. Yep. And, you know, if the tomatoes are, in, are imperfect, it doesn't mean they still don't taste delicious. Cut away the part, cut away either the, the blossom and cut okay. away the white part. The tomato yeah. is going to be delicious. Let's talk about some of the things that could happen. So you talked about blossom and rot, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, cut away the end, but if you do get it, it's fixable, which is is. that brown mushy part of the bottom of your tomato is fixable. Add calcium, water consistently. Yeah. Done. Yeah. You're right. Done. Mm -hmm. Um, What about all the things that can happen from a fungus? Oh. So you could get a uh, early blight which is little brown spots. Mm-hmm. You can get leaf spot, which will break out in yellow spots. You can get wilt. There's a couple different kinds of wilt. They all come from a fungus. You're making me sad now. I know, but now tomatoes, I'm sad. Are, tomatoes are so strong. They just get through all this stuff. Huh? Yeah, they do get through it. Yeah, it, it comes from the soil. So if you mulch, so these are about preventative measures. If you mulch, you'll prevent splash up. You can trim the bottom lower leaves. Yeah. What about pruning? Yes. Yeah. Careful of pruning too much because you need shade. Last year is the first time I've ever pruned and it really helped. Nice. I had no idea you were supposed to prune a tomato plant, but when they get gigantic and mm-hmm. crowded. Yeah, that's a it, good point. It was grateful. I mean, the air could yeah. go in and out. Such a good point. And, and you taught me how to pinch out the little... Pin um, up, some Pinch off the suckers. The suckers. Be- not little everybody... suckers. I tell you, not they everybody... Suck. They <laughs> Not everybody thinks that's a good idea. Who knew? They're draining energy from the rest of the plant. That's exactly what I think. That's what I think, yeah. And, Mm -hmm. of course, you have to rotate. Yeah. That, In fact, a lot of the problems that you have can be stopped before they begin by rotating. Which means every year plant your tomatoes in a different spot. Right. Rotate your whole garden, the whole entire garden. Fool the bugs. Bugs are not all that smart. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Hey, I I ate a tomato here last year. Yeah, exactly. It, where did it go? I mean, come on. If you if, if we're not smarter than a stink bug, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm one point smarter than a stink bug. That's all you need to be. You just need to be one point. Yeah. Right. Um, do you know also that if if there if you smoke or you're around tobacco products, that's also bad for your tomatoes. You know what? I've heard that, and I don't know why. Just but wash I've your heard hands that. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about the nicotine that's very bad for hmm. tomatoes. What about harvesting? 
You know, you can harvest them when they're green and put them in the house. Actually, not green. I wouldn't harvest when they're green. But when it's this hot, sometimes it's a good idea when they first start turning, you don't have to wait yeah. until they're red, red. I've, I'm pulling them at 75% because, as you know, my tomatoes are being assaulted yes. by a squirrel or squirrels. Or, I hate to tell you this, Edith, but somebody also told me it may not necessarily be a squirrel. It could also be a rat. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ooh. I know. Ooh, I hope gosh. not. Oh, I'm I just, hope not. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. And I'll say this is that raccoons have come in and taken them too, but I got to respect the raccoon. The raccoon, well, you know, you know you've seen a raccoon has come through because all you see are just little pieces of the skin. They'll eat the whole thing. Oh, much better. But the squirrel. Yeah, the squirrel. Who comes in and takes one bite and walks away. That's terrible. Um, And I have a present to show you, Edith, by the way, as we talk about... um. Um, tomato harvesting. Uh oh. Well, last week I shared that I brought in all these green tomatoes at the frost and I put them up in my attic. Uh huh. And then I got busy and I kind of forgot about them. And then by then it was too late. And so I still had four boxes of about 50 tomatoes up in my attic from last year. Did you bring them down? I brought one to open up. You haven't opened it yet? No. Okay, this is Should exciting. I bring the box yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's you do want... it. Okay. How, is it heavy or. Does it feel lighter? I'm going to give it to you here, and you could see that probably had about 20 tomatoes in it. Well, it doesn't weigh anything at all. It weighs almost nothing. <laughs> Christy, should open I open it? it? Should open I it, open it? it? Yeah, you okay, open it. Okay, okay. All right, I'm opening it. This is my shame. <laughs> There's newspaper on top. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to open another it's, box. It's a huge tomato blotch it's just <laughs> exactly that. like 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 tomato paint gone bad oh okay mine is mine looks like um some fuzzy um these oh i remember these these were big ones these were like big beef steaks in this box and they're little blacky it looked like mushrooms almost. Little, yeah, little flat mushrooms. mushrooms. These mush these tomatoes must have been as big as my hand. My gosh. And they're fuzzy and they're white and um there's not much left to them. I've stopped breathing now, so <laughs> stop. are we uh yeah, are we getting like some tomato spores? Uh, yeah, really. Let's we'll close them, but let's close let's it close up. The box. Let's close okay. them up. Okay. Well, that's my shame. That's so harvest your tomatoes and if you're gonna put them in your attic. Make a note to yourself yes. on the refrigerator. Yeah. There are tomatoes in my attic. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so what's your favorite thing to do with tomatoes when you have a lot? Well, I, I do give them away. Um, uh, I, I freeze them. I give them away, and I eat tomatoes every single day. Yeah, I could, I could eat them every day. I do eat season. them every single day. Yeah. And you, it's like summer in a bowl, yeah, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I like to can. I've been canning lately. I think that's maybe why I don't give them away so much is because I just... Oh, I freeze. I don't I don't want to... I don't can because I'm afraid of the pressure cooker sound. When I was growing up, you know, there was... My mom had one of those old pressure cookers for oh. canning. And it made that horrible sound. And it jiggled really, really hard. And I always thought it was going to explode and take the house with it. So I've been <laughs> unable to can my whole life. Um, so another reason why we need psychotherapy... Yes. In the yeah, garden, yeah, huh? Exactly. I have one of those um, uh, canning um, tubs, you know. Yeah, um, no, I don't know. But yeah, I should have probably have got, gotten one of them a long time ago. Yeah. It's a, a big pot. It's loop. a big pot. Yeah, that sounds great. You can borrow it if you want to can. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep freezing. Okay. I'll just freeze them. You can can if you want to. You can freeze too. <laughs> just freeze. Okay. Hey, I'm the old woman who lived in a shoe. That's right. I got no name and I live in a shoe. You think that would be bad enough, right? <laughs> but on top of that, I got so many children, I don't know what to do. So I gave them some broth and put them to bed. And Child Protective Services comes around and says, Hey, what's with the shoe? And you're just feeding them broth? Where are the vegetables? 
And I'm like, I live in a shoe. What do you want from me? Kids, go to sleep. It's seven o'clock at night. <sighs> so anyway, old Mother Hubbard, she lives over the hill in the house, a real house, not a shoe, says to me, you know, when my cupboard was bare, I grew a garden full of vegetables. I says, what? How do you know how to grow stuff? She says, I listen to this podcast called Upside Down Tulips. They help you. And they have a website and a Facebook page, whatever those are. Kids, shut up! I'm on my last nerve. So, anyway, I'm going to try growing a garden. <laughs> what do I got to lose? <laughs> Actually, I could lose the kids. They're looking peaked. So, I'll grow a garden. You could too. Upside down tulips. Subscribe today. If you're already subscribed, tell a friend. Especially if you have one that looks peaked. Mailbag will return next week because we talk too much about tomatoes, Edith. Oh, Christy, can I still do my ring ring, though? Can you say no mailbag? No mailbag. Ring ring. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Our inspiration for today comes from Robert Louis Stevenson. Don't judge each other by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds you sow. That's beautiful. It's a good message for life, too. That is really a good message for life, yeah. <laughs> oh, Christy, we're back. We're back. Amazing how things are so different than they were last summer, huh, Edith? It sure is. First of all, we were all wearing masks, and now we're both fully vaccinated. Uh-huh. And and uh, still sitting far apart from each other, though, for because that's how the studio is set up. <laughs> and I have full of anticipation about what this coming year is going to be like with tomatoes. Who knows when it's going to happen? Yeah, I know. This has been a weird year because it's been so cold, rainy, snowy. But um, I have not planted my tomatoes yet. Have you? I'm going to soon. In fact, I just picked up tomatoes. I'm going to try at the end of the week. Um, you know why? Because the health benefits of tomatoes are huge. They are the major dietary source of the antioxidant lycopene. Am I saying that right? That's what, how I pronounce lycopene, it. Lycopene, which has been linked to reduced risk of heart disease and cancer. They're a great source of vitamin C, potassium, folate, and vitamin K. It's not easy to find your vitamin K. That's a really good point. Yeah, it really isn't. And there's no more delicious way. Slap on your vitamin K with bacon. You're set, right? <laughs> It's also good for your skin, too, tomatoes. It has to be. I mean, when you get squirted with a skunk, you're supposed to lay in tomato juice, so it must exfoliate you, right? That's That, that must be why. That must be why. I mean, you can, if you have a stainless steel pot that's messy and you you cook a spaghetti sauce in it, uh -huh. tomato sauce, it cleans the pot for you. So think what it can do for your skin. Nice. Yeah. Without being abrasive. I just love tomatoes. To me, they're the highlight of the entire summer. What are some varieties? What are some hybrids that are good for our northern areas, Edith? Well, um, this is very cool because people in Alaska and Russia, even Siberia, have come up with hybrids that work there. What's cool about that is if you live down here where we are or even south of us, you can plant them early. You can have an early set, and then you can have a later set. And some of the ones are, and very often the name will tell you where they come from, there's one called Alaskan Fancy. <laughs> like that. Yeah. It has plum-shaped tomatoes, two-ounce tomatoes. There's one called the Black Prince, which is from Siberia, 70 days, and you've got a tomato. There's a bush beefsteak, 62 days. That's amazing. Yeah. Celebrity, which I grow anyway. I love celebrity. They, they will take the cold. Polar baby, developed <laughs> in Alaska. <laughs> Oop, there's one developed in North Dakota. Northern Delight. Moscovich, developed in Russia. 
So you know they like tomatoes everywhere. So you're going to be able to get a tomato. Now, you, not, you might not be able to get one of these at your local nursery if you live in a warm place. That means that you go to your seed catalogs and start your own seeds. Then you can have an early planting of tomatoes and then you can have your normal time planting of tomatoes, right? I've been afraid of the supply chain, Edith. Because 20 million new growers mm -hmm. and the and 90% of people, as we mentioned earlier, yes. who, if you have a garden, you are having tomatoes. Now, when I first bought all my tomato plants, it was just before Mother's Day. The nursery opened at 9 o'clock and the parking lot was packed. Wow. You want to wait until the evening temperatures are in the late 40s, early 50s consistently to get your tomato plants out there. And and so and I'm making a new plan for my tomatoes this year because last year I had a lot of blight and a lot of wilt and we all know what happened to uh -huh. you know my Alice the yes. tomato that died so I bought I'm going straight hybrid this year really I'm buying plants that will, will have the following delineation on it this is what I bought it either has a V and has a V F N or a T and an A. Which means that if it has a V on it, it means the plant is resistant or tolerant to verticillium wilt. If it has an F, it means that it is resistant or tolerant to versarium. And if it has an N, it means that it has nematode resistance, which refers to organisms that are living in the soil. That Now, some nematodes can be good, but this is about the bad nematodes. So what I bought, and I'll show you here right now, is... I bought some tomatoes that are earlier and some tomatoes that are that will happen later. So here is a 4th of July. Oh, I love 4th of July. Also got some early girls. Uh-huh. Then for the later ones, I got a celebrity that you just mentioned. Uh-huh. I got a better boy. I always love aroma. So I got a aroma plant and a cherry tomato plant too. Always have a cherry. And 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 for you know what? For our first-time gardeners. For example, the um, I think that's the 4th of July that Christy bought. That's about 8 inches high. So she's going to have a really nice head start on that. You can buy them smaller or you can buy them larger. I got some that are smaller, some that are larger, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, this year my tomato plans are the same because I didn't have any problems. So I went all heirloom again this year which we'll see. I lost one plant last year. I think I'm going to have to be hybrid for a couple of years. And of but, course, I'm rotating them. I'm putting them into a uh -huh, totally different part uh -huh. of the garden. And I will harden these off. So I'll start by setting them out for a couple hours every day. You know, you're making me think I should get a couple of hybrid seedlings. I really should as insurance. Plus, what did we talk about? We Plus, we can give away to Ample Harvest. If we have too many, there's food pantries everywhere that we can give them to. And you can always can. And you can always can. Freeze. Can, can. Dry. Th throw them at cars. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know what to say, Christy. I did have a... Uh, I had somebody mention to me about growing tomatoes in a raised bed. And I just want to remind people that... Tomatoes, the roots also grow horizontally. So you don't have to be worried about that, oh, I don't have enough soil here. That's a really good point. Right? And think about this in a raised bed. How do you keep the soil rich for next year? Well, stack your fallen leaves and yard rubbish on top of the bed at the end of the season so that it retains moisture and creates biodiversity for next year. Wonderful. Oh, you know what I was going to tell you that I also got today, Edith, is that I... I mentioned I was going to mulch differently and mulch earlier than I have in the past uh -huh. because I got all that splash up. Yes. And I was going to buy straw. Well, there was a big bales of hay at the nursery today. And they're only like 15 bucks. Bales for of hay or straw? Straw. Straw. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. right. Because straw has a hole in the middle. And you don't want to do hay because hay will grow. Wheat will grow in your yard. 15 bucks, but it was huge. Uh-huh. And so I didn't want to lug it around. But I did see next to it they had bags of soil pep which I know you've recommended I in the past. Mm -hmm. And on the bag, it said, also good for mulch. So I bought yep. a couple of bags of that. So I, use do that. I use it. I use it um, for mulch. I do. It was six bucks a bag. Very reasonable for a big, heavy bag. All right. Tomatoes. A lot of anticipation for the year. 
Who knows what they will be like when we talk about them in August. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. That's just something to look forward to, you know? I wish we could grow bacon. Well, I guess we can. We could grow pigs. We can be zoned <laughs> for it. <laughs> we better wrap it up, Edith. Yes, let's wrap it up, really. Thanks so much for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. If you got some laughs and value out of Upside Down Tulips this episode, would you do us a favor? Please go to your phone and share the show on social or with a friend who might also appreciate it. Special thanks to our talented actor and kind friend, Billy McBride. And thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you would like to hear more of Denise's music, just go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. Also a big hearted thanks to Southwest Gardens, our local nursery and friend and supporter of the show. Join us next week for our wonderfully bad jokes, our fascinating garden updates, mailbag inspiration, and digging into some topic that will amaze and delight you. That's our goal, folks, to amaze and delight you. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and no blame if we don't. <laughs> and don't forget, what? If you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. I almost forgot. <laughs> Upside down.